talk to brands, they love the idea and the opportunity to be able to get their content, whether it's earned media or owned content, uh, discovered by the audience of all these great publications. But um, they, are, they always have a lot of questions about how to actually go about implementing it. And the questions you know, vary from how do I create content that is compelling? I'm an ad agency, I'm a creative agency, I know how to do advertising. They're not necessarily in the space of content or content marketing. So that's a shift that agencies have to go through. And um, they also have kind of uh, a question that always comes up is the question of um, how do I buy it? How do I forecast what's the result going to be? And how do I bucket it? Does it from, from which other bucket of dollars am I taking away um, you know, dollars in order to put into this? What, what do you think about these things? I think it goes back to the, the that bucket example is uh, exactly what we were talking about um, with regards to attribution because uh, I think if you're, you're investing in content marketing, you're investing in top of the funnel, uh, brand awareness, you're not taking away from search, for example. Uh, you're seeding the seeds for that search. You're making for more, more for more of those searches down the road for and eventually for harvesting those search queries in a cheaper way because you've seeded those uh, seeds. So, you know, I think um, uh, marketers uh, should be looking at this a little more holistically. And, um, you know, and I, I truly believe that every marketer at the end of the day, every marketer at every ad agency are direct marketers. There's no other type of marketer. Uh, unless you're in the not-for-profit not business, you're a direct marketer. You want to sell product. And the only difference between traditional brand and what we see, you know, direct marketing on, on Google is the, the point of measurement and the horizon of patience is how long do I take until I see whether I sold product or not. And uh, you know, with this googly world, we've uh, all come to kind of just look at that last click and did this click within that session, within the next two minutes, uh, turn into a purchase or not. So that's a very short horizon to be looking at. And I think if brand marketers start thinking more like long-term direct marketers, uh, I think this all eventually is the same holistic bucket. Yeah, you know, when I, what, what goes through my mind uh, a lot of times, and, and that's what gets me so excited about the opportunity of Outbrain, is really that when I get that question, I actually say it's not taking budget away from, I think you should do more in social, I think you should do more in search. I have strong opinions about display, but obviously in display you can do a lot of things that are actually uh, good and valuable to, to the readers without interrupting their experience. I think the biggest opportunity for Outgrain lies with TV budgets that are flowing into digital. And I think that the reason to that is really because this is a top of funnel, this is a brand awareness vehicle, yeah. and consumers are consuming, you know, maybe in hours they're consuming more TV, but at the end of the day they're watching less TV ads, they're skipping ads, they're DVRing everything, they're on demanding everything. Their opportunity to really influence uh, consumers as we used to uh, decades ago using TV uh, are less and less, you know, and obviously the decline in the channels like news uh, uh, magazines and newspapers, those, the, the budgets have to flow from where it was traditionally to where consumers are engaging with uh, or interacting with right now. And those budgets need, need to flow into digital, but I do not blame you know, uh, brands when they say, yes, there is a $50 billion gap between uh, the amount of time people spend online and the amount of budgets we put into online. But look at the options we have. We have search, we have display, and we have social. These are not vehicles that are necessarily great for branding or vehicles that we can actually pour dollars on. and do actual brand awareness and brand affinity models around. And I think with content marketing, this whole thing changes. And with using something like Outbrain, that essentially solves the problem of, okay, I get it. I need to create good content, both for the sake of, you know, when people search uh, using SEO and such, I want to get them to, to, to be delighted by good content from me. But now there's a vehicle that can actually drive scale behind getting the amount of people I need 
to engage with my content, I can pay for it and say, I want five million people to watch my YouTube video. Why? Because I can. But you do it in a way that people self-select themselves as interested in that YouTube video because they discover it when they're reading a relevant article or related article on CNN. So that notion, the ability to really change the game as far as online marketing is concerned, is what really excites me. Me too. Um, but I want to ask you something else. I mean, there's a kind of a rush right now into social media. Everyone needs to do social media. Everyone is looking for Twitter tactics and Facebook tactics, and I need to get my brand liked mm -hmm. on Facebook. Is that branding? Is that, and, and you know, when you ask agencies that are doing that, they're saying they're developing content, right? They have to develop content in order to have any kind of um, participation in the social game, otherwise there's nothing to talk about with consumers. But a lot of times, that content is really, uh, get a coupon if you like me, you know, or play a game, stuff like that. So, I tend to, to try to force myself to ignore the, uh, the noise that the hype waves uh, bring with them, and every year is, uh, is its own hype wave. You know, you had to have a YouTube strategy, and then a Facebook app strategy, and then a mobile strategy, and mobile app strategy. It's every year in a dig strategy at the time, and uh, uh, you know, the hypes, um, hype waves come and go. Uh, I think the fundamentals don't change, and the fundamentals are, you know, as a marketer, you're either telling a story and seeding those seeds in, uh, in people's minds, or you're harvesting uh, the seeds that you planted. And it, it boils down to those two pieces. And I think social as a title, um, you know, there's probably opportunities to tell stories there. I think probably less opportunities to harvest uh, within, um, within social. But, you know, if, um, if a friend of mine is uh, on Facebook is um, saying they went to a concert and they loved it, that's a story that was just told there about the uh, about that musician and um, and a you know a seed was planted. So I, I think it has to be viewed within uh, you know within from those classes of whether I'm telling a story and seeding a seed, planting seed, or uh, or harvesting. Uh, doing it just for the sake of uh, we need this and that strategy, I think, is uh, just noise. Yeah, but I think one of the most important things that you mentioned is that. Um, the goal at the end of the day is to get your story told by someone else. Instead of you telling a story about yourself, if you can get other people to carry the torch and tell the story of the brand, and then potentially also with you know a paid media strategy be able to amplify it at scale and get, and get more and more people to engage with seeing that someone told a story about the brand, that's a unique opportunity that wasn't available it's, before. Yeah, it's, it's a unique opportunity, and I, I think it boils down to a single truth, which is if you want that you know, seed to be planted, uh, the story has to be great. And there are many ways to tell a great story. I, I think that having someone else tell the story about you gives it a lot of authenticity, and, uh, and it makes it great. But uh, you know, I, I can think of a brand that would freak out if uh, anyone told a story about them, and they'd like to own the story, and that's Apple. Uh, they tell a wonderful story, right? They'll get millions of people watching their keynotes for you know a two-hour story. Of but it doesn't just, mean they just don't them. also get. Tons that, of that, that's true, but it, but I think the the idea is the story has to be great. Having someone else tell it obviously gives it a lot of uh, authentic, yeah, credibility and authenticity, and uh, and that helps a great story. Yeah.